a broken heart, you can put your trust in him. You must see the need for a miracle. You may not be sick, but is this the best of your life? You will be so full of the Holy Ghost that when you step out of this place, your world will know there is something about you. I'm talking tonight about a victorious mindset. Write it. A victorious mindset. Or the victorious mindset, really. Hallelujah. The Bible says, do not be conformed. What does that mean? That means that there is pressure. Attempting to bring your mindset. Listen, a mindset talks of a sum total of your ideologies. A sum total of your philosophies, your value system. What makes up your belief system? What informs your convictions? about god about men about life and can i tell you something we come from different backgrounds and as diverse as our backgrounds are so are our mindsets we have packed every kind of thing from different systems different experiences and when we all come into the kingdom the bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation what happens you come as you are but you don't remain as you are are you listening to me the problem with the body of christ is we want to come as we are and remain as we are no no you come as you are and then the holy spirit engages you in the ministry of transformation hallelujah your work with the spirit should bring a predictable result I should be able to look at you after a season of walking with the word and with the spirit. You should look like something. And that portrait is the one we call Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. He said, let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mindset. Jesus walked upon the earth. He had a mindset. Are you listening to me? Jesus had a mindset. He had, he, he had a way he behaved. The way he responded to people. They believed that um, there would not be fish. He spoke as one with authority. They caught uh, a prostitute and brought to him. And he responded. He seemed to operate uh, with a value system that was not known to the then Jewish nation. And they were very surprised. What kind of mind is this? How do you think? What is your thinking pattern like? Can I tell you something? Every successful man in life has a mindset. Whether in the secular or in the kingdom. And a healthy mindset is not part of the gift of the spirit. Are you listening to me? Oh no. The Bible says, get wisdom. Buy the truth. It puts a pie strap there. Hallelujah. You cannot receive a kingdom mindset as an impartation. No, why? Because there are already forces in your mind. The Bible calls them strongholds. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but mighty through God. Hallelujah. What do those weapons do? To the pulling down of strongholds. They exist in the realm of the mind. He said, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. You are not just a kingdom citizen because you bear a Christian name. Even if your name is kingdom, it doesn't make you a kingdom citizen. Hallelujah. There is a mindset. And can I tell you something? Dr. Mike Mudok said something and I respect so much. He said the world has embraced the person of Jesus Christ, but we have rejected his principles. I mean the church. While the world has rejected the person of Jesus Christ, but they have embraced his principles. How true. Hallelujah. And so there is not just 
It's not just enough for us to pray. We've had 21 days prayer and fasting. You can never rise above the level of your mindset. Are you listening to me? You can never. No. I will show you from scripture that the mindset of a man can limit God in his life. God began to walk with the nation of Israel. And he showed them mighty things in Egypt. Hallelujah. The ten plagues and he parted the Red Sea. He did a lot of things to prove to them that he was Lord. But they had a mindset. Do you realize that they had been in Egypt for 430 years? Listen, 430 years is enough for you to adopt a mindset. Because you were born there. Are you listening to me? Now, when the Lord called them, that's why he had to separate them from Egypt. When God calls a man, he takes you out of the environment that created that wrong mindset. And then he walks on you. Then he sends you back as a deliverer. That's what he did to Moses. Moses was born with a mindset. He took Moses out to the backside of the mountain for 40 years. Let me announce to you that God is not in a hurry. He can wait. Are you listening to me? For 40 years, he wanted to use Moses, but the mindset of Moses kept limiting God. Until he walked on Moses in a way and a manner that his mind could now release God. And then he said, all right, let's walk together. The exact same thing happened to Abraham. God had a blessing for Abraham in his spirit. And he wanted to communicate it, but the mindset of Abraham would not allow the Lord to bless him. And one day the Lord said, how do I open this guy's mindset? He said, Abraham, come out. Look at the stars. He said, count them. And Abraham began to count. And he could not count. He said, now, this is how I will bless you. Finally, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. You have grown up with a mindset and you live in a world that says, well, whatever, whatever will be, will be. Whatever will be, will be. If I die today, I die. If I'm sick today, I'm sick. Whatever will be, whatever life gives me. Then you begin to study in God's word. And it says that this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. It said thou, thou should be careful that you observe it. It said then shall thy ways be prosperous and thou shall have good success. Hmm. and then Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day he said that I will set you on high and all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you there are two kingdoms fighting the mindset that you got from your village living with your grandmother, living with all kinds of things. Whenever the Lord begins to speak of blessings, you are not ready for those things because of a mindset. Do you realize how that Satan has crippled the church, the body of Christ, the nation of Nigeria by giving us a mindset that came from the African culture? Are you listening to me? There is a mindset that the African culture gave us. It's a mindset of servitude. We inherited it when, when the colonial masters came. After they finished with Nigeria, they left a mindset of servitude. And that mindset still follows even intelligent students on campus. Because the moment a student enters school, the next thing he's thinking of, he do, he's not thinking of productivity, he's not thinking of creativity, he's thinking of what? Servanthood. Let me just get somebody and let me be a secretary. It's a mindset. They limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God? And the Bible said that statement provoked God and God was angry. How dare you limit the Lord? Father, we thank you. Thank you tonight for challenging us. We refuse to conform to the thinking pattern of the world. We refuse to let the things we watch, the things we read about, the things we see and hear distract us from the reality of your word lord we make commitments tonight that your word becomes final authority in our lives that in life and death we live by your word manifesting the fruits of faith and of the operation of the spirit lord we know that your word will not fail there is a joy that is coming and our families our nation our departments our faculties our workplaces will celebrate your hand in our lives Hallelujah. We give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.